Okay, here we go again. As you've probably noticed, I'm in a different spot again, uh, using a different camera. Uh, in fact, uh, this is a much worse camera. Uh, I will point that out. This is a Logitech C922, I think it is, or 322 or something. I don't remember. Anyway, it's a 720 Logitech camera. Uh, it's not great. It's grainy. So we're going to kind of switch the visuals up here in a minute to uh, try to take care of that a little bit better. But I didn't want to completely freak you out with the brand new screen when you came on. Uh, we are going to talk a little bit uh, before we get started here that, yeah, uh, things have gotten a little messed up here lately. One of the things about doing this show in particular is that, uh, like I said before, this is I, I, I'm trying to make, make sure that this is a hobby, not trying to make this a job, right? So things happen. Uh, in the world, and then something happens, uh, you know, a bunch of stuff has been going on with my daughter at school, and her Chinese group is doing this Chinese New Year thing, and um, so there's been, you know, whatever stuff going on, and so it's it's taking up a lot of extra time, and there's a lot of weird stuff going on, and then this week, a bunch of people, uh, they left the country, they're all in Dominican Republic, um, so we're picking up some extra duties around here to, to cover for the people on that trip. So, uh, you know, there's some extra stuff going on. So, so one of the things was, uh, I, I want to apologize. There was no show on Thursday and Friday. I thought maybe I, I might do one on Friday, kind of make up for it, but didn't happen. So, so then today, Tuesday, uh, I was going to, um, do a review of this thing from Wish. It was supposed to show up about one o'clock in the afternoon. So I, I was working on my um, Elgato game capture. Uh, I had everything set up so I could pull footage from this thing and then have the picture of me on there. We could talk about what was going on. And it's really weird working with the Elgato and trying to get the, um, you know, volume levels right and the sound capture so that I can talk and we get some sound from the device and whatever. And then the package didn't come until about four hours after it was supposed to, and then it wasn't even the right package. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, that whole thing <sighs> fell apart. So, uh, I, I still have all the wires and everything set up for doing that video capture. I didn't want to tear it all apart, which is one of the reasons why we have this uh, funky setup here tonight with a different camera and stuff, because I didn't want to, you know, take everything down. Also, it is 11.34 p.m. Everyone else in the house is asleep, so I'm actually in a different spot in the back of the house, so I'm not going to wake them up and disturb everybody doing videos tonight. So, <laughs> you've clicked on the thumbnail. You know what's going on here. We're going to be reviewing some comics. Now, here's actually what we're going to do. Uh, I've got the comics here, even though these technically don't come out until tomorrow. went ahead and got them early, so uh, I do have uh, the four comics to review here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit right here. I'm going to read them. We're going to fast forward while I'm reading it, condense the time down. Uh, but So you can get an idea of how long it actually takes to read through some of these. Um, and then we're going to talk about them right here on the spot. Uh, before we do that, though, uh, I was at Killen's uh, today. And uh, he was nice enough to share with me these Growing Pains trading cards. Apparently... These have not been selling like hotcakes, uh, so uh, I went ahead and grabbed uh, some of these packs uh, to play with. Wait a minute. And this one, this one has no gum. Where's the gum? There's supposed to be gum, right? Let me make. Let me make sure they're supposed to be. Yeah, this one has gum. Okay. Huh. So this one didn't come. This one didn't get the gum. Well, that stinks. All right, so nine picture cards, one sticker, and one stick of bubble gum. Didn't get the gum, which is probably for the best because the gum in these things gets pretty disgusting uh, at this point in time. And if you want to see why, I actually did a video, uh, oh my gosh, like eight or nine years ago where I opened a pack of Garbage Pail Kids and ate the gum, and it was gross. So um, for those of you uh, who don't remember Growing Pains, it was a sitcom in the 80s. <coughs> Excuse me. 
uh, Kirk Cameron and uh, Alan Thick were the two big stars on that one. And uh, I was a fan, always, always a big fan. Uh, one of the things I was a big fan of, uh, oddly enough, was Maggie Seaver, the mom. She was, uh, she was good for a growing boy. And uh, in fact, here's one of the reasons why. Check this out. Woo, there she is in the bathtub. And of course, this camera doesn't want to focus. Um, ready to throw in the towel, honey. This is weird. So, Growing Pains, these cards, they, okay, so they have, they have scenes from the show. Um, but, but the captions underneath don't match. So it's like, it's like an early form of memes or something. So you can see, okay, so the, the, the shape of it is like a house. There's like a TV antenna there at the top and there's a picture. Of course, this doesn't want to focus because this is a terrible camera, uh, but we've got Mike and Carol, Carol Seaver. Yeah, Carol, there we go. Carol accidentally breaks her mother's favorite lamp, so Mike and Ben help her glue it back together. But poor Ben gets glued to the table. Just wait until Jason and Maggie get home. Okay, so that's the actual, like, clip from the show. That's what it's supposed to be. But but the, the uh, caption underneath the photo is, Come on, help me. I put super glue on my fingertips. So uh, they, they wrote jokes uh, on the cards just as good as the ones in the show. Sometimes a guy just has to make sacrifices. I'll only go on two dates this Saturday. Okay, hot date. A date with gorgeous Madonna lookalike Lisa is every guy's dream at Hoover High. And she shows up at the Seaver's door. But Mike quickly discovers luscious Lisa is a bit too hot to handle. Ooh, that's something. Wish I had a better camera uh, running right now instead of this old one. Uh, what does this say? 1988, looks like. All rights reserved, tops. 1988. All right, so we got a Maggie Seaver uh, sticker. Some of these. Yes, son, that's the best trout imitation I have ever seen. Mm-hmm. Okay, so um, there's, there's some of the highlights from that first pack, even though it... it did not have any gum. Uh, let's see, this next pack. Ooh, the gum is intact in this one. So this other one I opened, the stick is still complete. That is rare. That's actually, uh, that's more collectible if it's done that way. Uh, so we've got, what do we have here? Whoo, can we just have dessert without dinner tonight? Mm-hmm. That's great. Um, let's see, here's sticker oh it's uh, and the second sticker is also maggie siever so i've got two actually that's that's awesome because now i can do the uh the 3d thing where you hold the two of them up and then you like you cross your eyes and it it actually kind of works except it's doing it backwards so instead of being 3d coming out it's 3d popping in and that's because the print on these is so bad it's just a little off um, that crossing your eyes to do the stereo effect kind of works because the two images are a little bit different um, because the offset printing is off. Uh, so that's interesting. Um, boy, these jokes. Yes, dear, they're the fairest of them. You're the fairest of them all. Now can I use the mirror? Wow, that's great. That is, that is humor. That is, you can't, you cannot beat this humor. All right, so anyway, that that was uh, pack number two. <laughs> Just giving you the highlights. I don't I don't want to bore you with everything. I mean, we we got to get to these uh, comics. But uh, now, see, this is this is more what I expect. The gum is, if I can show it here, it's all broken into pieces uh, on the inside. That's that's what you expect to see with this old gum. And don't try chewing it because if you try to chew it, it just kind of dissolves into powder. Uh, it won't gum up anymore. It just kind of comes apart and just becomes gross uh, in your mouth. Oh, here's a trivia question for you on the back of this card. Do you know the last name of Mike's friend, Boner? Remember his friend, Boner? Was it Santone, Martinelli, Blansky, or Stabone? Well, it was, in fact, Stabone. It was Boner Stabone. I remember that. That was 
Fantastic. Sometimes a guy just has to... Wait, this is the same... Guy has to make two dates. Yeah. We got uh, Maggie in the bathtub. Imitation of the trout. Aloha from the sea. Okay, there, there are a few things that are different here. Um, what's the sticker in this one? Oh, the sticker is the Sensational Seavers. So there we go. And actually, that's kind of funny because it, it it's almost the same uh, hairstyles as everybody on the Goldbergs. So there's something interesting. I hope everyone wanted those burgers well done. Ah, oh, I wish that face would focus because that is, that's money. Okay. So anyway, not going to, not going <clears> to <throat> go through all those. Just fun thing had to share. All right. So we're going to get into reading these comics. And the first thing I'm going to be reading is Batman. So let's switch over to Batman. Yeah, see? Made some new little uh, things here. Now, uh, I, I never just sit down and read to do the review. I always have to have uh, a nice beverage. Uh, in this case, it's Ham's Special Light because uh, I only drink the best. It's only the best. And uh, I've got a couple of these here. So, mmm. I do like the um, the taste of a good light beer. I also have a Zagnut bar because uh, I only like candy bars that were developed in the 1950s. Anything after that, uh, and they lose uh, all the charm. Okay, so here we go. I am going to begin now on Batman 87. And, of course, this uh, frame that I put together is from the regular cover, uh, but... I buy the variant, uh, and the variant was four ninety nine, and I don't know if it's because it's because it's the cardstock cover. They're they're doing, I guess all the variants now are going to be cardstock, so they're going to cost more. Which kind of no, that's not even true because this Superman is uh, oh, but it's not cardstock. Okay, I was going to say because it's only three ninety nine. But anyway, <clears throat> all right, here we go. Batman 87, part two of the new story by James Tenian the Fourth. Here we go. Hmm. Okay. So, Batman 87. Okay, definitely, uh, again, I like this so much more than Tom King's run. Um, what's going on? What we, have, what we found out last time was uh, these five assassins, um, they were awakened, um, not awakened, but um, a plan that had been stored years ago, whatever, was put into motion. The plan was awakened. They came to Gotham uh, to start, you know, whatever uh, was going to happen. Um, Bruce Wayne had made a bunch of changes or was in the process of making changes to Gotham City and whoever these villains are, they had some plan for changing Gotham City. So now it's basically Bruce Wayne and his plan for the city versus uh, whoever's pulling the strings. And this next chapter gives us a little more insight into the depth of the plan of the five assassins. We still don't know who's in charge and we're still not getting all the answers, um, but it really does a good job of showing how well thought out everything was. There's still some questions. Um, there are a, a couple things in here that they seem like very happy accidents um, that are somehow planned. Um, and in order for the plan to work, you would have to have, I, I don't know what I want to say without giving it away, um, but it's too convenient. It's too convenient. So there's got to be, there's got to be a mole somewhere um, in order for some of the stuff they pull off to pull off. Uh, but we don't really seem to get a clue of who or why. Um, but we find out that the group of assassins are actually using a, a plan that was put in place by somebody else. Uh, another villain, and that villain is not entirely happy to find out uh, that his plan is being used. And uh, so we get two 
mainstay bat villains having this conversation about um, uh, someone named the Collector. I think is that is that it, the Collector? Um, and uh, and then we have these uh, assassins um, who apparently they knew uh, being captured by Batman last issue was part of their plan. Uh, the designer. The designer, not the collector. The designer. So whoever the designer is, he could be the one behind the five uh, assassins. Um, uh, and of course, that would kind of make sense. But again, who knows if they throw red herrings in here. So again, uh, I, I do like this better. Uh, I do like this a lot better than the Tom King run on Batman. Um, I definitely, I think the story is a buy so far. It's a lot of fun. Oh, I'm Riddler. Whew. Um, Kelly Jones did not do the artwork, but it sure looked like uh, he could have uh, because of how the Riddler looks in this particular issue. So uh, I definitely, de this is definitely a read. This is definitely a buy, uh, I, I would put right now. I was a little skeptical with Tinny in the fourth. He's not my favorite writer, um, but I do like this story a lot. Uh, and I would definitely put this in the buy pile. Um, I don't know if I had to give a score out of 100. Uh, I'd say it's a solid 80, maybe even an 85. I am, I am, I am very intrigued to see where it goes. Again, it's not perfect, and there's some things that I'm kind of afraid they're going to just skip right over, uh, and it's just okay. They were able to pull this off, and it it, it seems too convenient. But uh, but overall, yeah, this is good. I, I enjoyed this quite a bit. Okay, so on to our next book which is Detective Comics. Woo! And so Detective 1019. And again, um, the cover that you see on your screen, the, that artwork is from the um, main cover, and, and I've got the variant here, uh, which is a very dark painting that's kind of hard to see uh, on that camera. But I, I forgot to check to see how long it took to read the last book. So uh, I'll, I'll put a time count of how long it took to read the last one there at the end. Um, but I'll kind of keep an eye uh, here. So here we go. Detective Comics 1019. Hmm. Okay. So that took about five minutes to read. Um, didn't really care for it, to be quite honest. <clears throat> uh, it's unusual because it's, the story is based around the winter solstice. Uh, it is now January 21st, right? Now it's the 22nd because it's Wednesday. Uh, but December 21st was the solstice um, in December. So we're a month past. This book is bi-weekly, so it makes it a little odd that um, in the month since the solstice, we get the story of the solstice instead of it happening, you know, ending on that week or, or starting on that week. Um, so that's odd. The story itself, what we saw last time was... Um, Really, a Bruce and Lucius story. Uh, Lucius Fox, which is who is taking the place of Alfred, um, who is currently dead in continuity. Um, Bruce and Lucius were spending time together. Lucius is forcing Bruce to actually be Bruce Wayne. I enjoyed the stuff between them, and then at the end, this Norse guy comes and attacks Bruce, and that's the end of the issue. Um, this. They, they do a little bit of the Bruce and Lucius um, character stuff, but it's only for about two pages, and then it just kind of drifts away. They still interact, but it's not, um, it's not perfect. And then it, it wraps up... Um, I don't want to... Again, I don't want to spoil anything, but it wraps up very conveniently... Um, in the end, nothing really happens. Um, I mean, you, you kind of get a glimpse of something, but it doesn't... 
things aren't what they seem. And what you get seems less interesting than what it seemed like it was going to be. So, um, and, and, uh, there, there was not, uh, it, it's one of those where things are explained because Bruce does a bunch of research and then he goes and fights. And while he's fighting, he's running through the stuff that he researched in his mind um, just to give some sort of narration for what's going on. But it's giving away the plot points uh, and things that should happen in the story. Um, here, like Honestly, I'll put it this way. This feels like it. Sh there should be another issue. Um, and maybe for something else going on, they said, no, 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 instead of three, it's got to be two. So he had to kind of crunch things down and condense them to make them work in one issue. Um, that's a distinct possibility, but I'm not necessarily a fan of the total product. So if you've not bought 1018, uh, and you're not necessarily planning on 1019, I would say this story is a skip, uh, read it. Maybe if it shows up, um, like on Comixology Unlimited or something in the future, it might be kind of an interesting thing, uh, to just kind of skim through and get an idea. But honestly, overall, um, not too impressed, which is kind of a, a, a bummer because uh, Tomasi or Tomasi or whoever, however you pronounce his name, uh, he's usually pretty solid. He usually can do a, a good story, a, a one issue, two issue, uh, decent thing, but this is not it. So that's a shame. All right. So now we've got our next book, which is Superman 19. The truth has been revealed and things will never be the same. Um, so that's that cover, uh, the main cover, talking about, of course, the current story plot that um, Clark Kent has revealed that he is, in fact, Superman. So now we get the next part here, Superman 19, that has been revealed. We get to see some of the uh, fallout from this. So come on, Bendis. Let's see if you can do anything interesting. Well, um, again, one of the problems with Bendis is dialogue and the fact that it, the dialogue just goes on and on and on and on and it takes the place of actual plot. He writes scenes, but the scenes don't actually accomplish anything. He might try to write it off as some sort of character study or something, but it's really not. Um, instead of throwing in some snappy dialogue and getting things moving. He spends pages of conversation and people going back and forth, uh, whole panels of just someone like reacting to what's being said around him. Um, Superman revealed who he was, that he was Clark Kent, whatever. Um, so the Daily Planet has to figure out, you know, what to do with this. Perry and the, of course, the all the lawyers uh, that come with a media conglomerate type place uh have a lot to say about this whatever so he's got to deal with uh lois and clark here um uh, one of the things of course is that they decide that there's they're now going to push the fact that superman writes for the daily planet uh so the clark kent thing it's it's the byline is no longer going to be from clark kent it's going to be superman exclusively speaks to the world through the daily planet which uh, I don't know. I don't know how that really falls into uh, the Superman mythos. Um, and then it it, it goes into uh, there's going to be some Superman spinoff. Superman Heroes number one um, is going to be coming. That that the story continues into. Great. Um, and then there's something with the United Federation of Planets uh, that they just set up. Well, I guess it's not the United Federation of Planets because uh, that's Star Trek, but whatever. The United Nations of Planets, the United Planets, United Planetary Federation. I don't even know. I forget what that thing was called, but it's the reason why uh, Bendis had to make his son into a teenager and then throw him in the future with Legion of Superheroes. I'm not a huge fan of all of this going on. 
again, nothing really happens in this book. Um, I, I hate to say it because I've been reading Superman stuff for so long, but it might be time just to not buy Superman for a while. Because uh, this is not... I would, I would not recommend picking this up if you're not picking up Superman because the storyline... It, it may go somewhere interesting, but for now, it's not. It, it's really not. And, and again, nothing nothing happens in this book. Completely skippable. All right. And then our final, final comic here. I will flip over to Ghostbusters number one. Now, Ghostbusters year one. I do not normally read Ghostbusters all the time. I've read it, uh, you know, here and there over the years. Uh, especially with some of the crossover stuff that they've done and, and whatnot. Um, but uh, I picked this up, Ghostbusters Year One, because I remember reading something about how this is supposed to go into the early days uh, of what it was like for the Ghostbusters. So you can see uh, the artwork here. It's um, uh, actually, I, I just did, I did get cover A. I didn't really care. Um, you can see that there's the, it, no, the well, okay. There's there's Winston, and you follow the beam over, and the guy over there, that's the ghost that was the uh, taxi cab driver in Ghostbusters. Um, down at the bottom, we have him covered in the uh, marshmallow fluff from the Stay Puffed guy, Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man. Um, I'm not sure what the other piece of artwork is. Uh, it's supposed to be down at the bottom, uh, but nonetheless... We have that, and it's weird because Ghostbusters, you know, the Ghostbusters logo, I think everyone's pretty much familiar with the uh, the, the ghost, uh, you know, coming out. Oh, it's also on the back there, of course. Uh, the ghost coming through. And then for Ghostbusters 2, they have the ghost doing two up there. So they, they drew this Ghostbusters logo doing the one. So that you know that it's this is the first movie. Like, this ties into the first movie, not the second one, the first movie. Instead of just doing that. So here, on the back, we've got a quick little write-up. Uh, in anticipation of the new Ghostbusters feature film, coming to theaters summer 2020, we look back at the boys in Grey's first year on the job, showcasing never-before-seen adventures by the fan-favorite and critically acclaimed creative writer Eric Burnham, artist Dan Schoening and colorist Luis Antonio Delgado. So, yeah, this is why I wanted to get it, because it's it's going back to the early days, um, year one, so to speak, of uh, Ghostbusters. And I found that idea intriguing, interesting. And so, uh, here we go. Okay, so I'm going to take a quick pause here because the battery is about to die. So I need to go find the uh, plug, plug in the laptop before it actually dies. And I'll do it with a bite of Zagnet. <sighs> Crisis averted. All right. <clears throat> Here we go. This is a good one. Ah, what the heck. One more bite of Zagnut before we get back into it. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. That's really good that's really good um wow uh i'm really impressed uh this is actually the type of thing i i might read this again um so this is set after the events of the first movie obviously there's uh, a reporter who's there to write a book uh, about everything that happened 
some of the smaller characters that you recognize from the film will appear at the beginning to give little quotes, um, little pieces that are supposed to be for the background of the book doing these interviews. And then she sits down with Winston to uh, talk to him about what he did before he became a Ghostbuster, what it was like being hired, how he got trained. And so some of the stuff that you're seeing there with him is slices that happen in the movie in between other scenes. Um, so you, you get, you see him, him actually training with the uh, proton pack the first time he actually captures a ghost. Some of the stuff that would have just in the movie been part of one of those montages and whatever stuff that they just skipped over. You know, Winston gets hired. He's shown how to flush a trap. Uh, and then the next thing you see him out in the field. So this answers some of those questions, fills out some of that other stuff. So uh, it's it, it's one of those things where, uh, th as I was reading it, I, I started hearing the voices more. Um, all of the characters, even though the style um, is very much like the, the cartoon, the real Ghostbusters, which of course you can see by looking at the artwork here on the screen, um, the story the actual story um that I, I was hearing the voices from the movie i was picturing the stuff as i was thinking back to some of the stuff that happens in the movie and thinking about what's happening in this comic uh, they just flow together really well um i know that the writer burnham uh working on this book is someone who's done a lot of work with uh ghostbusters over the years and this some of the other Ghostbusters stuff I've read, you think, okay, these are the Ghostbusters, whatever, but you you just kind of, I don't know. They, they were um, expanded universe, uh, to use another term. They were stories that very well could get skipped over in some sort of future uh, telling of the Ghostbusters. So there could be something in the new Ghostbusters movie that would undo something that happened in those other comic series, you know? Uh, here, this feels uh, like it's deeply connected. You know, this feels like the, the tissue um, that holds together parts of that original story. Um, you know, when I got done reading it, uh, you know, I, I kind of got, like, goosebumps almost in a way because I did have a really good feeling about the story. I would say out of the four that I've read, this one actually is my favorite. Um, and, and I'm not the biggest Ghostbusters fan in the world. I, I you know, I, I definitely enjoy the property. Um, I never saw the, the remake uh, all the way through. I just, I couldn't do it. Um, but I, I have always enjoyed uh, Ghostbusters. But I'm not like a big collector of everything Ghostbusters. I don't have my own proton pack or anything like that. Um, but getting done with this comic, if if you in any way... Uh, if I've, I've seen the original movie multiple times. And if you are one of those people who've seen the original movie multiple times. And you can recall a lot of the events from the movie. And a lot of the characters and a lot of the dialogue and things like that. Then this is definitely... Um, I think something that, that you'll want to get. Uh, at least this first issue with Winston is great. Um, I don't know how the future ones are going to go, although I did notice they show artwork uh, from the next one focusing on Ray Stans. And down in the bottom, uh, there's a picture of him in this um, military-type garb reading a book. And it's funny because I was just talking about this uh, with somebody the other day, there's the scene in the first movie where he wakes up in the middle of the night and there's this ghost of the woman floating above him and his pants start to become undone on their own and then it focuses on his face as his eyes roll in the back of his head and he's like, whoa, all right. Um, but if you pay attention to that scene, you realize he's wearing this jacket. Uh, he's wearing this, this uh, military outfit. And... It's apparently a scene from a, a sequence that got cut from the film. They filmed that particular scene, and then they went ahead and used it in the movie. Uh, and you're not, it, it, it plays almost like it's a dream. Um, like he's dreaming this sequence happening, um, but it was something that was meant to be in the film as part of them. I think they were busting ghosts out of an old 
uh, Civil War fort or, or something like that. Um, maybe Revolutionary War, whatever. Uh, so uh, it's interesting. I, I see that in there. Now, you know, I'm definitely intrigued for the next one um, because I did enjoy this so much. Uh, and then seeing that, I wonder if they're going to explain that scene. So that scene that got cut from the movie, um, you know, is that maybe now added back into the canon uh, by uh, use of this series. So now I'm wondering if any of the stuff I've just read in here is stuff that was, again, supposed to be canon uh, and then got cut for time or in a rewrite or whatever. Um, but this definitely, this feels like Ghostbusters. Um, that, that feeling of abandonment you had when the last movie came out, uh, that's now gone and we feel like we're right back into the thick of things where things work. So again, even though it looks like the cartoon uh, versions of the characters, really, um, it, it feels like the movie. This was awesome. This is, this is a definite must-buy for any Ghostbusters fan. Um, and even if maybe you haven't seen the original movie, uh, but you know the new one's coming, so you're like, well, you know, I should sit down and watch the original. It's a classic movie from the 80s. Everybody says it's great. It is great. Uh, watch it. Enjoy it. Um, and then read this uh, to go with it, because uh, this is a nice little chaser. So uh, this is definitely my favorite of uh, the four I've read. So I, I know I've got uh, Red Hood and the Outlaws also to read this week, and... Again, I don't think I'm getting any Marvel at all this week. Um, I, th there are three comic book stores in town, and I used to work at... Well, technically, I used to work at two of the three. Um, so I, I still go to all three comic shops every week. So I get some books at one store and some books at another store and some books at the other store. Uh, that's just the way I do things. So, uh, But now it is 12.30. I've been sitting here for an hour, even though we fast-forwarded through a lot of this stuff. Um, you know, for your sakes, you don't have to sit here and look at me while I'm reading um, or even chasing down the power cable uh, for the laptop. Uh, still, though, I need to finish this up and finish this up and I need to head to bed. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Oh, and I'm not going to ask you to like, I'm not going to ask you to subscribe, I'm not going to ask you to share, I'm not going to ask you to hit that bell. I'm not even going to ask you to join my Patreon, which I don't even have. All I want you to do is remember this one thing. You're watching the best looking guy on the internet.